Welcome to this video on the power rule. By the end of this video, you should be able to use the power rule as well as the product rule from the day before to simplify monomials. All right, so what is the power rule? The power rule means, remember power refers to exponents. The power rule means when you have an exponent a variable raised to an exponent and then you raise it to another exponent. What you end up doing is multiplying these two exponents. So you'll have a times b, whatever that number is. And to help you kind of remember this, remember when you have a number next to a parenthesis, that usually means distribute. So this exponent will end up being distributed in to everything inside of the parentheses that it's um, being raised to. So let's try a few of these and see how the get a feel for how the power work the power rule works. So I have an exponent raised to an exponent. So we have x to the third, and then that's going to be squared. But what you end up doing is multiplying those two exponents, so you get x to the sixth. Let's try it again. The exponent gets distributed to every exponent that's in, even if it's a one. So we're going to multiply it to both of those in this situation. So we have a, that's 5, and it's being raised to a 3, so 5 times 3 is 15. b squared, 2 times 3 is 6, so we'll say b to the 6. We'll try it again. So we're going to multiply the exponents by 5. So we have this first exponent on the c, 2 times 5 is 10. Then we have the D, and it remember it has the understood exponent of 1, so 5 times 1 is 5. Okay, now remember I did say the exponent is going to multiply to every exponent in there, even if it's raised to a 1. So I'm going to put, we have a coefficient in this one, negative 5. That negative 5 has an exponent of 1. It's not written there, but it's there. So we need to distribute this 4 and have it multiply to the 1 that's on the negative 5, to the 3 that's on the x, and to the 4 that's on the y. <clears throat> so I'm going to write it the first time and I'm going to say negative 5, the exponent of 1 times 4 is 4. Then we have x, 3 times 4 is 12. Then you have y, 4 times 4 is 16. So now what I want you to do is I want you to simplify this down. All right, so here's what I mean by that. We'll get our, out our handy dandy calculators. So negative 5 to the fourth. Anytime you have a negative number being raised to the exponent, I want you to be sure you put it into parentheses. So I'm going to say parentheses, negative 5, close it. And now to raise it to something other than a 2, this would square it. So we're just going to use the up caret and a 4. So negative 5 to the 4 is 625. So I'm going to rewrite that as 625 x to the 12th, y to the 16th. That's going to be in our final simplified form. Let's try that again. Remember the 5 has an exponent of 1 on it here. And then this power exponent on the outside gets distributed to every single exponent inside. So 5 and then it's 1 times 3, so it'll be 5 cubed. Then we have a, a is being squared, 2 times 3 is 6. To find out what is 5 times 5 times 5, 5 raised to the third equals 125. And then a to the sixth. All right, let's try it one more time. We're going to send it all the way through. So we have 2 being raised to the 5, and then we have 5 times the 3 on the x, 5 times 3 is 15, then we have 5 times 3 on the y, so y to the 15th, and then we have 5 times 1 on the z, so it'll be z to the 5th, 
Now, I want to know what 2 raised to the 5th is. That's just 2 times itself 5 times. But 2 raised to the 5th is 32. And then everything else will stay the same. x to the 15, y to the 15, z to the 5. <coughs> Okay, now we're going to kind of start combining it what we, with what we've been doing previously. So in number 7 here, I've got multiplication between this term and this term. But what I want to do is I want to go ahead and simplify this down before I multiply these. So I'm going to send this power 3 through. So I have a to the 3rd times 3, which will be a to the ninth. Then you have the b, it's 2 times 3, so that would be b to the 6th. And this is going to multiply to a squared times b. So remember when we're multiplying, we add their exponents. It's not an exponent being raised to an exponent. They're on the same level, they're going to add together. So we have a to the 9th times a squared, 9 plus 2 is 11. And then for my B's, I have six B's here and one more right there. So I have a total of seven B's. And that's the final answer on that one. All right, let's try it again. So the C squared, it's going to end up being multiplied to this one. But we want to simplify, get rid of this power to a power right here first. So we're going to still keep the C squared and it's going to get multiplied to negative c and 4 times 2 is 8. Okay, so now I'm going to look at this. This is really a 1 times a negative 1 out front. So 1 times negative 1 gives you negative 1. c to the 2 times c to the 8 is c to the 10th. All right. Keep working it. Okay. We're going to multiply these two terms, but you got to simplify down this power to a power first. So you have negative 3, and it's going to be raised to a 3. And remember that whenever you have a negative number, you, when you go to calculate the number, you want to have it in a parenthesis like that. Then we have an x, and it's 2 times 3. So that gives us 6. And so let's get the rest of this number. So, so we have negative 3, and it's being raised to the 3. So that's a negative 27, x to the 6th, and that's going to be multiplied to x squared, y squared. So we got this bigger number. I'm, I just brought down the x squared, y squared. Now, negative 27, the coefficient here is 1, so we're still at negative 27. x to the 6 times x squared, x to the 8. There's no y here, but there's still a y squared there, so he's going to come down unchanged as y squared. All right, so these can be a little complicated. You really need to stay organized and keep track, make sure we're simplifying and following our proper order of operations. So now I'm going to be adding these two. So I need to find out what this term is and find this term, and then we're going to add them together. So we have a power raised to a power. So four being raised to the three, so four cubed. And then we have our a, and it's three times two, which will make that six. Plus, then we have this 2, a power of 2, so 2 to the second. And then we have that 2 times the 2 on A for 4. And 2 times the 2 on B also for 4. Okay, so let's keep simplifying these down. 4 raised to the 3 is 64. So we have 64a to the 6th plus, well, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times itself twice, a to the 4th, b to the 4th. 
these are not like terms. They're not ex the exact same thing. So we're actually done here and that's going to be our final answer. <coughs> Okay, so these can be used in a variety of different ways. We're going to try some geometric applications on them on the back here. So let's flip this over and take a look at this. We're going to find the area in the perimeter of these. Okay, so for a rectangle, remember area is length times width and your perimeter is add up all the sides. And so the official formula for perimeter is two times the length plus two times the width because there's two of each. So if this side is 4x squared, so is the side over here. It's just not labeled. If this side is 10x down here on the bottom, so is this one on the top. Okay, so let's do area first. Length times width. We're multiplying so the order doesn't really matter. So I'm going to say 4x squared times 10x. Okay, we're multiplying. So 4 times 10 is 40. x squared times x is x cubed. So that is our area, length times width. Now our perimeter. To, we're adding, so again, order doesn't matter which side we say is length and which side is width. So I'm going to say 2 times 4x squared, because there's two sides that are 4x squared, plus 2 times 10x, because there are two sides that are 10x in length. So 2 times 4x squared is 8x squared, plus 2 times 10x is 20x. These are not like terms. That's all there is to it. They cannot combine. So that's the end of that area and perimeter. So we're going to try it again with a triangle this time. Okay, <clears throat> so our triangle, area of a triangle, it's half a square, okay, or half a rectangle. So if it's length times width is the rectangle, area will be one half length times width because it's just half of it. Okay. And then of course our perimeter will be similar. We're just adding up all the sides. And so there's not a formula here. We're just add all sides. Okay. So to find our area, it's going to be one half, whatever the length times the width is. And so length times width in a triangle is base times height. So our base is 4xy and our height is 3x squared y. Okay, so I think I'm going to hold off multiplying. Well, it doesn't matter. I can distribute this to the 4x squared or I can multiply these together. We can go ahead, 4xy, 1 half 4xy will be 2xy. I just multiplied 1 half times 4 and that will be multiplied to 3x squared y. Okay, 2 times 3 is 6. There's x to the first and x squared for x cubed. y to the first times y to the first will be y squared. So this is our area of that triangle. Now for perimeter, we're going to add up all the sides. So we have 3x squared y plus 8x squared y plus 4xy. Um, these two are like terms. They're exactly the same. x squared y and x squared y. So 3 plus 8 is 11 and the x squared y stays the same because we're adding plus 4xy. These are not like terms. So we are finished there. All right. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. See you in class.